My name's Anetta Black. I'm the curator of Odd Salon. And I wanted to take a moment and welcome all of you tonight. Before I hand you over to this evening's curator, um, it is my pleasure to welcome to the stage, finally, uh, Amy Widowson, who is one of our founding fellows. The founding fellows of Odd Salon were convinced to join us on stage for the promise of a shiny lapel pin and free cocktails. And we didn't know what we were doing, and they came with us for the ride. And Amy has been there since opening night when she spoke about the, the formation of the French Encyclopedia on our very first Odd Salon. And since then, she has uh, given many, many wonderful talks. I hope most of you are familiar with Amy's wonderful wit and style already. <laughs> if not, you're in for a treat. My personal favorite was we had a, a speaker drop out a few years back with 24 hours notice, and Amy jumped in to give a talk about the history of the Smithsonian's uh, paleontology collection with very little notice, two dueling laptops, a failing microphone, and a lot of style, and it's one of my all-time favorite Odd Salon talks ever. So please join me in raising the first glass of the evening to this evening's curator. Welcome, Amy. This is your microphone. <laughs> What's up, nerds? Hey, guys. How are you doing this evening? Are we good? Are we having? I'm very nervous. I'm very, very nervous. Um, and oh, and that's already moving, so that's fun. Um, thank you, Anetta. And uh, it is an honor to be up here uh, hosting my very first Odd Salon. As mentioned, uh, I've been here for a little while. Um, this is me going through my folders and looking at the five talks I did the first year um, back in 2014. We cool? Everyone good? All right, good. It's good. <laughs> um, so I'm very happy to be here. Let's just jump right in. Uh, this is actually a photo from our very first Odd Salon. That's me uh, writing out notes for my talk um, back when we had physical notes because that's what we had. Um, Yes, too. And this is also uh, from that same talk that Annetta just mentioned. Obviously, I'm an enthusiastic person. Um, <laughs> and I, <laughs> I, I, I also want to introduce myself. Uh, one of our fellows, Casey Crowell, hath dubbed me the Odd Salon resident woo girl. So basically, I'm expecting you, dear, dear audience, as I am up here on this fine stage in heels and very nervous, to absorb and reflect some of that enthusiasm slack as I attempt to guide this fine ship this evening. <laughs> Yay! Um, because they're letting me curate a whole evening, and holy hell, that was a mistake, so let's not tell them that. <laughs> Um, first off, I want to thank all of the artists who were exhibiting their work upstairs tonight during cocktail hour. Um, Eden Gallanter, Ashes Monroe, Stephen Tan, Stella Brown, Candy CJ Martinez, our very own Michael Salazzo. I want to thank our volunteers. On merch, we've got Casey tonight, and up front we had Sahil and Stuart. Please thank our volunteers this evening. But before we get going, all right, y'all, who here's new? Who's, who's new? Hands up, hands up really high. Welcome! We are so happy to have you. Um, if, just for those of you who are new, I normally say this at the front door. If you have questions, look for those of us fellows in our pins. We will happily answer your questions. We might not know them, but we'll make something up. Um, now, who's been here before? Okay, so those of you that are here now, turn to the people who had their hands up before because now you're responsible for their fun. Just ki I'm fucking kidding, but seriously, how many people are here on a first date? No, wait, don't answer that. <sighs> Whoever bought your ticket has really good taste. This is off to a great start, everybody. So what is this? <laughs> uh, second date, that's awesome. Welcome, good luck. Um, tonight, we're gonna be sharing six short stories inspired by all of the very best things. Murder, double crossing, whales, blimps, lost colonies, rabies, history, art, science, etc., etc. Right in the middle of it, we're gonna have a cocktail break in which you will be encouraged to fill your glass 
kindly tip your bartenders well because we love public work so very much. Um, thank you. And engage with your fellow odd nerds because guess what? You're all one of us tonight. Um, our speakers are experts or enthusiastic amateurs or probably a bit of both. Um, I, Annette didn't mention this, but this is a community project. It's a fifth season of our community project. So we, we highly encourage you to be generous with your applause, which is pretty much the only thing any of us can afford to be generous with right now. Great, first joke down, moving on. <sighs> Please work. Yeah, there we go. Um, if you couldn't tell already, we want this to be a loud interactive event. This is not the symphony. Um, so in fact, when I describe it to newbies, when I try and get people to come hang out with us, I like to uh, describe it as, it's like you got to kindly heckle your college seminar teaching assistant with a tasty beverage in your hands and all of your best friends around you cheering on those heckles. So in the spirit of them being happy and positive heckles, regulars, I'm gonna need some help as we do these call outs. There we go. Just kidding. I knew I was going to get yelled at. This is a test for all of you. Technically, and I know KC was going to call me on that. That is a boat. <laughs> and in case you're wondering that I actually did know the difference. <laughs> Don't test me, motherfuckers. I'm on top of this. Uh, I've got this stage tonight. And yes, that's a dog in that boat. Ships. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> um, God help me, I will make this a thing by the end of this evening. <laughs> and finally, I thought about making murder the call out this evening, but I was worried that it would be my true crime fandom spilling too much into my odd salon fandom. So just a couple things though. If you're here right now, you're looking up at us or looking at any of the speakers and going, huh, you know, I could definitely do better than that. First off, <laughs> rude. Second, do it. This is a participatory adventure from the get-go. And if you, yes you, have a story you'd like to share, you'd better put your internet submission form where your mouth is and submit. Gosh darn it. Yes, the gosh darn it is written on there. Um, and if you don't have an idea yet, join our email list. Come to one of our brainstorming sessions. We'd love to have you and I promise we bite well. And you may notice that I have a phone up here with me. That's because normally I'm the one, one of the ones live tweeting this event. And so while Annetta is out there this evening live tweeting um, so that I can pay attention to the evening, um, I will definitely be putting some, uh, some of our speakers up online. So I encourage you to do the same. We're Odd Salon on all of the things and our hashtag is learn something weird. And speaking of something weird, after this here show, head on over to the Facebooks where this motley crew of speakers will be posting some of their source material and any other super interesting tidbits you've heard tonight. So my darlings, let's jump into mystery. So why did I, ju why did I jump at this topic? Why did I specifically demand Annetta allow me do this this evening? One of my very first early Odd Salon talks was on one of my idols, Amelia Earhart. Fun fact, when I was younger, I tried to convince my parents that Amy was short for Amelia. They didn't believe it. So this evening, I thought about revisiting her, especially since uh, recently there's been some new uh, updates on her remains and whether or not they've actually found something that could have been her. Um, after all, I spoke about her four years ago, and it would be good to come back to it. But then I thought, well, maybe I could talk about the Nancy Drew mystery series, because that impacted me as a child, and who the heck was Carolyn Keene? Well, it turns out she was a multi-decade uh, pseudonym, ghostwritten by female writers who were only paid $100 a book with no access to the profits. Or maybe I'd delve into the Zodiac Killer. Like I said, I'm... I don't think I'd let that hang, my friends. Especially since the Zodiac Killer is going to be up for re-election in Texas in November and we should be supporting his opponent. The deadline to register to vote in California is the 22nd, so do it. Um, fun fact, Ted Cruz and I have a lot in common. Get ready for this. We were born in the same city in Canada. We went to the same college and we both really like criminal minds because he's the Zodiac. 
But then I happened upon possibly the most Odslon story of all time, the legend of Brother Twelve. This story has everything. <laughs> Ships, Madame Blavatsky, the occult, cults, a persuasive douchebag, Egyptian gods, reincarnation, an apocalyptic age, bespoke religion, Canada, France, American politics, anti-Semitism, the Ku Klux Klan, sex, a sex cabin, a dominatrix, a dominatrix in a sex cabin, embezzlement, oh God, I'm losing my notes, gold, mason jars, lost treasure, and a possible fake death, boom. I found it, guys. You see, my doves, I'm from a lovely place up north called Canada. Yes. Specifically, I'm from the western side of Canada, which I did mention when I talked about where Ted Cruz was born, <laughs> which is Calgary. There we go. But even more specifically, I'm from Calgary, but my father is from Vancouver, and his birth family is from the Vancouver Islands. And as the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation pointed out in a long podcast I listened to, quote, from obscure Christian cults and arcane theosophists to determine back to the landers and intentional communities of all kind, BC probably has a greater percentage of failed utopias than any other province in Canada. <laughs> so... I went back last week for Canadian Thanksgiving with my family, and I'm out to dinner with a bunch of my, my clan. And uh, my aunt, who also happens to be the amateur family historian we have, she offhand mentioned something about a cult leader in British Columbia during the interwar period. And I basically shut down conversation for the rest of the evening, because how in all hell had I never heard about this? There is so much to this goddamn story. The major book on the subject, and uh, most of the scholarship is written by this individual, um, is by John Oliphant and called Brother Twelve, The Strange Odyssey of a 20th Century Prophet. This is the book that all of our speakers received this evening. Um, I just want to read a quote about the book, uh, which you can read, but essentially this guy is a combination of L. Ron Hubbard, Jim Jones, Rasputin, and a bunch of other shit. The theoso or sorry, the Theosophical History uh, publication said that. There is so much in this story that anyone could do an odd salon talk on, but I call dibs on it motherfuckers for another day, <laughs> even if I'm giving away the ending this evening. But let's try and do a speed round because y'all came to hear other people talk, not me. Um, British guy, Edward Arthur Wilson is born, grows up, gets married, has two children, abandons his family to go find himself, and never sees his children again. In the 1920s, said man appropriates Eastern religions and mysticism and the occult to create his own hodgepodge of beliefs. He gets really into Madame Blavatsky and theosophy. He travels to southern France, has a vision, becomes Brother Twelve, decides he's reincarnated Egyptian royalty. He writes a whole bunch of stuff, creates the Aquarian Foundation, gets kind of famous, suddenly has 8,000 followers, decides to start a colony in Canada near Vancouver Island where all the wide-eyed dreamers end up. Moves a bunch of his followers, who all happen to be mostly white men, out there to create the colony. Builds a bunch of shit, including a private cabin where he writes his teachings. Starts to lose his shit takes on a mistress who he also believes to be the reincarnation of Isis to his Osiris, claiming that their child will be Horus slash the Messiah, starts using aforementioned cabin to have, mm, there we go, have sex with said mistress, gets said mistress pre pregnant twice, she miscarries twice, and is never seen from again. He gets power drunk. He starts skimming from the foundation kitty. He gets sued by his board of directors. He countersues. There's an insane courtroom record that you can all read in that book that I mentioned, and including allegations that he used black magic to intimidate his witnesses. He's absolved, but he dissolves that foundation. He starts getting fucking weird with his fucking followers who he might be fucking. He gets another mistress who calls herself Madame Z, Z or Zed, it's Canada, a self-styled dominatrix known to enforce the colony rules with a riding crop. He gets a reputation, continues performing black magic whilst possibly abusing his followers and amassing an arsenal, and a yacht, but Johnny Law gets wind of it. <laughs> I love you. Stuff starts closing in, so he sinks, and he, he explodes his yacht, literally explodes it, dissolves all of the foundation and vanishes. Yes! 
Casey, I love you. So, so let's ask, why didn't I talk about Amelia Earhart tonight? <laughs> <laughs> it's a mystery. Um, you know, talking about her would have been the perfect button to my odd salon career as to this point. And, you know, it is a question that has puzzled me for a long time. But here's the thing, I don't like buttons. I don't like solutions. I don't like tidy endings. We're not here this evening so that we can lay out uh, some form of a, of a timeline and have a neat little bow on the end. There's no fun in that. No, it's, it's mystery that intrigues us. I like the hunt. I like the thrill of the chase, the prickling terror of the unknown. I was hanging out with fellow, fellow uh, Lilia Gutnick over the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Get it, girl. That's you. Um, and we were discussing this invocation because I was super nervous. And she asked me why I wanted to talk about mystery. And what I thought about was when I was a little girl, I, was ne uh, I would never seek out the presents. Although I always knew where my mom hid them because, of course, I did because I was crafty. But I never tried to find out what they were. I never went and looked into, the, into the, 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 the case that they were in because I wanted the surprise, because I loved the mystery and the lead up to it. For me, mysteries are intriguing because of that possibility, because we don't know what door we're going to go through yet. It stretches out wide in front of you. And in a world gone mad, where our actual reality has become far more terrifying than much of the fiction that we read, there's solace and comfort in that wonder. At least I take that, in the what if. I love stories, and stories are a lot better when there's the thrill of the unknown, the unanswered. We humans like to tell stories, they draw us together, and stories are a hell of a lot more exciting when they're embellished and you don't really know what the ending's gonna be. A and me personally, I, I like the mysterious. I like the strange, I like the delay, I like the tease. I'm so sorry, that's my hinge profile, um, <laughs> excuse me. So back to this douchebag. If I'd presented the aforementioned story that I just told you with the ending of the commune being dissolved, that would be interesting, sure, but it would join up with other failed utopias like the Oneida community in MySpace. So, <laughs> <laughs> too soon. But what if I told you, what if I told you that Brother 12 had converted that embezzled fortune, the equivalence of $6 million, into gold coins? And what if I told you he'd started filling 46 mason jars with said gold coins? And, <laughs> and what if I told you that when he vanished, the gold also vanished? And then what if I told you that he supposedly hid the gold around the world from Nanaimo, where the commune had been, to Switzerland, where he died of a heart condition, or he was murdered by Madame Z, or it was tertiary syphilis, which explained his mental state? And then what if I told you that those mason jars are still missing, and that they're possibly hidden somewhere on this coastal BC retreat, and that in 2018, so long after his death, they are still searching to find Brother 12's buried treasure. And, and what if I told you that Brother 12 was seen after his death, speaking with a lawyer, where? Here in our very own city of San Francisco. <laughs> so that's a mystery, and that's an odd salon talk. So we are gonna raise a glass this evening. Uh, this was displayed prominently in the mess hall of his uh, commune. Never is this born, nor does it die, nor having been, does it ever cease to be. Cheers. <laughs>